We filmed five mountain guides during their companion rescue training. They have no idea where the victims are. Hey, Kollegen, habt ihr es gesehen? Da ist eine Lawine abgegangen. Dürften so an die drei Verschüttete sein. Gegenstände sind heraus. Da müssen wir suchen, gell? Alle VS-Geräte mal umschalten auf Empfang. Und wenn wer ein Handy noch eingeschalten hat, die gleich ausschalten noch, gell? Dann tut der Franz und der Max, he? tut hier gleich VS-Suche machen. Der Dieter macht gleich Oberflächensuche, da sind ein paar Gegenstände. Und dann haben wir noch Schau für uns unten vorbereiten, gell? One also, member of the group takes control immediately and unambiguously. He then acts as the coordinator and later on the contact for the arriving rescue teams. While the quick search gets underway, he also calls the emergency number 112. Heli gives a detailed report to the control center, thereby mobilizing extra help in addition to their own companion rescue. With shovel and probe in hand, he hurries to help his colleagues. Everyone has a job to do. Max and Dieter are performing the detailed search, and the other three are hastening to dig the already located victim free. Two minutes, ten seconds, and the second victim has been detected. Paul hurries straight to the point of detection, so now two diggers are already at work here. Schauen wir, dass wir zum Kopf kommen, he? Da sehe ich mal eine Hand, gell? Schauen wir mal, wo der Kopf ist, he? So bei dir, ja? Gleich mit der Hand den Kopf freilegen, gell? Hat ein bisschen einen Schnee im Mund, gell? Schauen wir, dass wir die Atemwege freibringen. Okay, der Schnee ist heraus. Three minutes have passed, and all three victims have already been found. One has already been dug out, the second is nearly out, and the third has been detected. The second victim is freed after three minutes, 30 seconds, and is responsive. While Dieter takes care of him, Paul hurries to the third rescue site to lend a hand. Heli tries to get a clear overview of the situation and make sure that all participants are equally informed. One haben wir da, der ist bewusstlos, gell? Dieter, wie schaut's bei dir unten aus? Ja? Bei Bewusstsein? Ansprechbar, ja? Und ihr dazu nur graben, gell? Four minutes, 20 seconds. Dieter leaves the second victim alone, since he is conscious, and he can be more use helping with the digging. Da oben ist ein, da tue noch Schaufeln da drüben. Der ist bei Bewusstsein und den geht's halbwegs gut, oder? After 6 minutes 17 seconds, they have dug out the third victim as well. He is conscious. All efforts are now concentrated on treating the most serious case. The dugout victim is now placed in the recovery position and wrapped up warm in the bivy bags to protect him from the snow. Langsam. Ja, langsam, langsam. 
Once all have received first aid, our team waits for the rescue helicopter to arrive and take all three victims to the nearest hospital. Und ich rufe jetzt gleich nochmal an, wie weit das mit dem Hubschrauber ist, gell? Und der Mama. In an interview, the psychologist Dr. Bugram describes the key factors for a successful search. There are two basic factors which determine the success of the search. One is the external context, for example, the weather conditions, the amount of snow, and also the condition of the equipment, and later on the human factor which is of course key to the success of the search. For example, it depends how fit each individual is, how well he has been trained, and also how well he uses his equipment. In other words, to increase the effectiveness of the search, it is particularly important that each individual should be optimally trained in the use of the device. This should also involve practice under extreme conditions or in exceptional situations because exogenous and endogenous factors play a critical role in stress situations. Later on, it is also important to keep calm in the search situation and to be thorough while retaining a good overview of the situation.